Welcome, people, to the latest episode in the series of films showing you how to develop Super 8 yourself. And this time we're going to go for the big step, which is we're going to develop a Super 8 reversal film. In previous films, I've been developing this stuff into a negative and then scanning the negative and then flipping it on Adobe Premiere. But this time we're going to do it chemically all the way through. So we end up with a more conventional strip of film with the positive image that can be projected from a film projector straight onto the screen. Now, I'm going to use caffeinol again because it's worked up to now. So that brings back our old friends, the soda crystals, the coffee and the vitamin C and the Ilford stock bath and the rapid fixer. But because the reversal process entails a couple new steps, we're going to bring some uh, new members to the party and that is sodium bisulfate. Not to be confused with sodium metabisulfite and something that you may have heard of before potassium permanganate. Now these are going to make up two intermediate steps called the bleaching and the clearing and at some point I've got to take all the film out of the canister and expose it all to light as well. Now the films I'm going to be processing because it's the first time I've ever tried the uh, reversal process I'm going to use some films which aren't exactly uh, cherished memories. There were some old very old film stocks I got off eBay. One of them is this Super 8 made by Boots the Chemist which was already exposed when it came through. I should have uh, left them a bad review for that. But what the hell, it's not my memories. I'm going to process it anyway. And the other is this discontinued Kodak Ektachrome E160. Now I did test strips of these in a previous video and I did manage to get a picture off them using caffeinol. So I'm pretty confident that I'll get something out of them this time, unless the whole reversal process screws it all up. Seeing as this time round, I'm using some uh, pretty nasty stuff. I, of course, have got hold of some rubber gloves and some dust masks to prevent me inhaling the sodium bisulfate, which uh, causes you to drown in sulfuric acid that forms inside your own lungs. So I'm going to try and avoid that. So let's get mixing some chemicals. Right, so I'm making the caffeinol first, of course. I've already dissolved 108 grams of washing soda in one litre of water. I'm going to dissolve another 32 grams of vitamin C in half a litre of water and then I'm going to dissolve the coffee in another half litre of water. I found it's easier to dissolve all the stuff separately and then mix them together. So let's measure 32 grams here. This is all to make two litres of caffeinol. And it'll fizz a bit. Okay, so there's the dissolved vitamin C going in with the washing soda. It's a lot of coffee. <laughs> and there is our caffeinol, two litres of it. Right, so now this is mixing the bleach, which is in two parts. You've got part A, which is one liter of water with potassium permanganate, and you've got B, which is one liter of water with 54.5 grams of sodium bisulfate, which is uh, not very nice stuff at all. So let's do that first, 54.5. This is to make the uh, bleach acidic. You can also use concentrated sulfuric acid. Oops, I went slightly over, Never mind. Let's weigh out the permanganate. Now these two parts of the bleach should be mixed with distilled water. You can get it from a dryer. Now this purple stuff, potassium permanganate, if it goes on your clothes, it's not coming off. So that, watch out for that, that stains. Wear some old clothes and be very careful how you handle it. And now we make the clearing bath, which is 60 grams of sodium metabisulfite. Whoa, it went over. Ah, I would advise you to wear the mask for that bit. 
I should point out that 2 litres is quite a lot of developer bleach and clearing bath to use, especially if you're not going to use a big ass tank like this. I'm using an 8 reel tank because I had some issues with the film being a bit crowded in a 2 reel tank and not all the developer getting to it, though other people have managed it fine. Ideally I would use a proper Lomo tank, but they're a bit expensive so I'm going to hold off on getting one of those for now. Normally I'd pour this shit right down the drain, but I'm going to be reusing this. We used the developer twice. And I've reused Caffanol before, and it was fine. It worked fine both times. I've done the developer, I've done the wash, I did a stock bath, I did another wash. Now it's time to add the two parts of the permanganate bleach. Now you have to do this because apparently if you put all the powder in one at once, it doesn't dissolve, one inhibits the other. So that's the acid going into the potassium permanganate. Uh, it, does, it won't quite make up two litres, but that's fine. I'll just top that up with water. And this is where I get some permanent stains on my clothes. Nice. And this stays in for five minutes. Oh, I got splattered by the permanganate when it came out. Oh, I've had my baptism now. That's just the purplest shit ever. So I've rinsed out the bleach, and uh, now it's time for the clearing bath. Now some of the research I've done suggests that you can do this, you can actually take the film out and do this in, uh, in normal light. But I'm not going to take the ch any chances. I'm going to take it out at the next step. Now it stays in there for two minutes. Okay, so it's gone in and out of the clearing bath and it's had another rinse. And now, this is an interesting part because this is called second exposure, where you take it out. Uh oh, it's got fucking remjet all over it. Oh. Thank you, Kodak. See this? No, there's this nasty black crap all over it. That's probably gone and inhibited some of the processing. <sighs> anyway, you're supposed to hold the whole lot up into the light now to make sure that uh, like any remaining silver gets exposed. And then you put it back into the developer and hopefully some kind of image comes out on this. At the moment I see nothing. So now it all gets dunked into the developer for a second run around. You don't have to do it in the dark anymore, which is a blessing. And I'm gonna do this for another 15 minutes. Uh, let's give it a wash. Jesus Christ, the red jet's just coming off in scales, in chunks. In retrospect, I think the process went a bit off the rails here. In fact, it might not have just been Remjet that was coming off the film, but the actual emulsion too, not helped by my rough handling of it. In future, I'll attempt to wash off the Remjet before I even start developing, or stop using old Kodak film stock in favour of a film that doesn't have Remjet on it. So, here's the bad news. Despite all my efforts, nearly nothing came out no recognisable images on either the Ektachrome or the Boots film. I searched it frame by frame, and I thought I spotted some ghosts and some very faint images, but these could easily have been the result of pareidolia, which is where the mind perceives a familiar pattern where none exists, a bit like seeing shapes in clouds, or a face on Mars, or a rabbit in the moon. So why didn't it work? Was it the chemicals, the film, the processing times, or a combination of all of these? To isolate what went wrong, I needed to do the exact same process again, but with film stock that wasn't 30 years old. For this, I chose some newish Fomapan 100, which worked out well for me in the past. I also used my best Super 8 camera, just in case it was in the filming where it all went wrong. So I shot a test film with the Fomapan and did a straight caffeinol negative process on it, 
and I was relieved to see that it worked. I also saved a strip of the film I had shot and then did the whole reversal process on it, not changing anything, to see if it was the reversal process that was at fault. Here's the film I shot and processed as a negative, showing a chicken taking a dust bath, and here's the strip I processed as a reversal. It worked! So, it was the old stock and possibly dodgy exposure too that messed up the first two rolls. So at last, after reversal processing of another roll of Foam Pan 100 Super 8 that had been shot by the participants of a workshop I held, I had a roll of positive film that could be put straight through a Super 8 projector. It looks a little brown, and that's probably due to the caffeinol, but I'm really happy that I now have a chemical reversal system that works. That said, processing it as a negative and reversing it digitally not only used fewer processing steps, but actually yielded a better quality image. Also, I found that you can emit the stock bath and just rinse really well after developing, and it doesn't seem to affect the process. In the future, if the film is only going to go online or be digitally projected, straight negative developing is how I'll do it. But it's good to know that I can go full analogue with a chemical reversal if I need to. As a final note, I have a plan for the messed up rolls. Despite no discernible images coming out, the abstract patterns made with no CGI at all actually look rather nice. I might use them to make what's called a cameraless film, in which a strip of film is coloured, scratched, bleached and stained to make a fast animation like this one made by Tony Hickson. In future films, I'll be talking about how to do a telecine conversion that isn't just filming off a wall. I'll try doing a pre-developing remjet removal, I'll show you how to film with synchronized sound, and I may even make my first tentative steps towards color. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and get out there and do a reversal of your own and post it up here. Just watch out for that old film stock. So our old friend with the washing soda, oh for f**k's sake, of sodium metabisulfate, sulfite. <gasps> oh f**k's sake, the stock bath has just gone all over the place. F**k's sake, f**king, piss coloured f**king stock bath, piece of shit. I don't even need it.